What is the best revenge you've ever gotten on someone? Back when I was a wee kid, we lived across from a popular public pool in a tiny street, so parking was premium. We sometimes had issues with people parking across our driveway, but we were pretty chummy with the pool owner and would just get him to put the message out over the loudspeakers and the people would come over, apologize, and move their car. However, one afternoon coming home from school, this person had the audacity to park in our driveway, in our garage. My dad was dumbfounded. We went over and put the message out as per usual and this woman in her 30s came over in a huff and said she would fix it when she had finished her exercise routine. So my dad just parked behind her and we went out for dinner for four hours or so. She was pissed, but the story doesn't end there. She kept doing it, usually two to four times a month. Eventually, my dad would not think twice about parking her in and letting her out at his own leisure. No problem by us, lots of problems by her. She once called the police on us, to which they just told her to not park on private property and wrote her a citation. But wait, there's more. One Saturday morning, she had the gall to park us in our own driveway. Dad had had enough. He made sure she was doing her laps, grabbed a coat hanger, jimmied the car open, and dismantled the passenger seat, taking it out and leaving it on the curb in front of the pool exit. He then sat on our front deck, sipping his tea as she came out of the pool to get her car. She walked past the passenger seat without a second glance and scowled at him as she opened her car and got in. She then did a double take as she went to put her bag on the seat. She freaked out, realizing my dad had had access to her car and belongings this entire time and done nothing about it until now. She ran over, grabbed her seat, put it in the boot, and drove off. Never heard from her again. Or they could have gotten it towed multiple times instead, but I like this uh, revenge payback system that they've got going on. It would have cost her a pretty penny too, though. Story 2. This happened a while ago. A little bit of background, but my then-girlfriend had slept with this ex-marine guy who was a total hothead. He got kicked out because he punched his CO in the face. Real freaking smart of her to get involved in, but what am I going to do? I had to deal with him all the time, calling her, freaking her out, showing up at her house at 3 a.m. and sitting for a few hours and leaving. The kid was kind of nuts. What made it bad for me was that he was 24. I was 17 at the time. I'm pretty strong for my age, but I'm not going to BS myself. There was nothing I could do against someone of his physique. He was my height and outweighed me by probably 40 pounds. On Halloween of last year, he showed up when my girlfriend and I were having a fight about him, funnily enough. He rolled into the parking lot. I had no idea how he found us, but whatever. He got out of his car and stormed towards us. She walked over to him and told him to leave. I yelled at him to get the hell out and roll up my sleeves, ready for a rumble, and he saw this as a threat. He puffs up and yells, come the hell at me, you twerp. I thought for a second, I had had enough of this guy. It had been a year, he had been tormenting her and I. So I walked over toward him and he started getting all ready for some real Hulk smash stuff to go down. I walked right past him, over to his car, opened up the driver door and asked him to get in. He looked at me like I just asked him nicely to do something and, and overcome with Neanderthal rage, he ran full speed at me. I was really scared and at the last second moved out of the way, pushing the door closed. He smashed face first into the window and did a number on the side of the car. His face was really messed up and I didn't know whether or not he was conscious. Never having got into a physical altercation before, I was really disturbed by this and so didn't know how to act. I looked at him and he did the first thing that came into my head. I spanked him over and over and said, leave me the hell alone, spanking him on each word. My girlfriend stopped me and I stood up. I looked at her and said, you want to have his children? They had done it unprotected. Then you deal with his childish antics. I'm done with both of you. Got in my car, drove the speed limit out of there, freed of all of my baggage and heart beating like a drum. Story three. Back when I was in middle school, there was this boy that lived across the street from me. Our parents were really good friends, so this led us to babysitting him and vice versa a lot. Whenever he would be at my house, he would be a little prick and break something, then run to tell my parents that I broke it, and naturally, my parents believed him. He did a lot of more of these things to get me in trouble, but this is what he did most frequently. One day, when they were babysitting me, I got the idea of taking some of these little lawn gnomes that I found at a flea market and putting them in his closet, under his bed, in the shower, etc., wherever I would frequently go. Then the next time I saw him, he would tell me how he kept finding them everywhere and when he would give them to his parents, they would just say he was doing it for attention. Each time he found one, I would find a new hiding spot for it. Then one night when I was sleeping over because my parents were going to be out really late and wanted me to go to sleep earlier, I had a plan. 
Since I had already been torturing him for about six months with the gnomes, I gathered many from my adventures around the local flea market. Once he fell asleep, I quietly entered his room and put all the gnomes I had around him. There were dozens of them in his bed, all lined up around him and by his face. The next morning, I'm woken up by the loudest and most blood-curdling scream I ever heard. I ran in there to see what happened as a result of the gnomes, and he's sitting in the fetal position, wrapped in his blankets, repeating, No more gnomes! No more gnomes! When his parents got in there, they finally believed all he said about the gnomes while I sat there trying to hold back my laughter. Fast forward to when we were in high school. Since I stopped hiding the gnomes a few years back, I was wondering if he was still frightened by them, so I grabbed a few of them and headed into school. During our first class of the day, I excused myself and opened up his locker. Very easy to break into, all you had to do was jiggle it a little bit, and on the shelf that was at eye level and place them in a line on the shelf. Then after the first block, I am walking to my next class and I see him bolting from his locker to the nearest bathroom and he was sobbing for the next half hour until a teacher could convince him to come out and talk about it. He didn't come to school for the rest of the week. Looking back on it, I may have gone a little too far, but he tortured me for years before and after I started with the gnomes. Gnomes, man. Gnomes everywhere. All right, guys. Hide your kids. Hide your wives. Hide your husband. Take shelter. No man is safe. Story 4. A kid who treated school like it was pointless and caused tons of problems for everyone once tried to get me expelled by saying I was going to bring a gun to school because he was just a jerk. I was called into the principal's office. There were cops and I kid you not, a PowerPoint presentation about gun safety in schools. I asked what all this was about, and they said someone had said I was going to pull this off. I was admittedly scared, but I kept my cool and explained how I'm one of AV kids. I worked on after-school projects and was surprisingly not that bad, just told jokes a lot. Now, as it turns out, you can place tips anonymously, but this poophead had opted not to. I had a class where he was always a jerk to me, so the teacher was called, asked for their opinion. Apparently, he had heard a rumor someone called a fake threat in the hall before his current class. Well, with a little luck and a teacher on my side, plus the other kid's reputation was crappy and his grades were too, and my grades were, well, less crappy. But my reputation was pretty good, so I got off the hook. I was relieved, but angry. Given the situation, I played up the victim role and congratulated people for behaving responsibly to a perceived threat. Asked what would happen to the kid that put me in through this hassle, and specifically asked if this was worth expulsion. I saw the principal smile, but he said he couldn't tell me, school policy. But a week later, he was expelled and all I had to do was plant an idea. I guess he had broken one too many rules, lol. Story 5. When I was a teenager, my family stayed at a campground for the summer. There were a bunch of kids that hang out, about 15 of us, and it was almost a 50-50 split between boys and girls, which led to some very eye-opening and pleasing summers. But I digress. So average age of the guys were 15, we were full of testosterone, and while the kids were running around swimming and trying to not get caught doing anything else, the adults were partying. I mean, just getting ripped. A couple of guys that were there would get absolutely hammered and mess with us kids. Not in a hurtful way, but busting type stuff. So we'd sling insults back and forth, and then one day, it escalated. I can't remember exactly, but I want to say they threw eggs at one of us. And oh, did I forget to say that these two guys each weighed about 400 pounds? It was all gut, literally. These guys drank like fishes their entire lives. One passed away way before he was 40. So when you're that big and immobile, throwing eds at kids that play baseball almost year-round, not a good idea. So we got them back. Anyways, little revenge pranks go back and forth like this for a few weeks until we drop the proverbial prank hammer on them. So even though we were in our younger teens, one of our friends looked like he was 20. So we agreed that we would buy a gay adult magazine. So a bunch of 15-year-old kids huddled around a table trying not to look at all the things laid out in the magazine in front of us. Needless to say, there was a lot of awkward laughing. We eventually cut out all the pictures and we had about 40. I'm guessing, don't remember the exact number. So as these two guys were passed out from the various booze and substance consumption, we broke in through their porch. They had the door locked, but they had screens on the outside window, so we lifted the staples out and two of us climbed in and proceeded to tiptoe around and tape up these dude pictures everywhere. On the walls, a TV, in one of the bedrooms, tape behind milk cartons, in the case of beer, literally everywhere. This was done on purpose, of course, because while we wanted them to see the obvious ones, we wanted them two weeks from that point to reach for something or look for something and look up and whammy, rock hard Jimmy right in their face. So we stayed up all night to wait for their reaction, and of course, it was priceless. 
First, you hear the morning fart, the groans and stretching as they both start moving around, the stumbling, hungover, half-dead walk of two 400-pound men, then names changed. Bob, holy crap, there's jimmies everywhere. A plethora of swear words, you hear the paper being ripped off, more swear words. Now, these are just the visible ones. I heard the fridge open, heard one of them grab something. Then I hear, Steve, it looks like you're chugging that guy's D. <laughs> An extreme close-up picture of a dong was taped onto the milk carton. They actually found pictures for another week or so, but the crowning achievement was when they had a bunch of family over, parents and friends. And as Bob lifted the grill cover to get started, an 8x11 picture of a gigantic bear dude holding it like Thor's hammer floated out into the air. It moved around a little before finally settling on the picnic table, right smack dab in front of all the family and friends in attendance. It was epic. So that's my greatest revenge story, I guess. Now, it would have been a lot more diabolical to simply leave one or two of the mags semi-consciously tucked into one of their bunks, wouldn't have been as much fun, but the payout would have been excellent, I'm pretty sure. Just like the payout would be if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. A lot of epic stuff going on that you wouldn't want to miss whenever we publish new videos. And of course, it really helps me out. So thanks for that. Let's go ahead and get back to the stories. Story 6. I was on the varsity swim team for 6 years, 7th to 12th grade. I led her two times, 9th and 10th grade, and swam through an injury in 11th grade where I was not able to let her by one missed practice. I had swum for this coach on a summer team since I was eight and had problems with her before. Every year, either the seniors or in the event of the team not having seniors, two elected upperclassmen were made captains. The coach decided that my fellow senior and I were not leaders and that she would choose two of her best swimmers, juniors, to be captains months before the season started without consulting the rest of the team or even telling us seniors. She chose the new captains based on the fact that they were the fastest swimmers on the team and completely ignored them, only ever interacting with other people in the same lane as them, and never taking any responsibility that wasn't forced upon them. They never cleaned up equipment, helped other swimmers, or anything team-related. This is after I showed up at the preseason conditioning and set the pool up every day while one of the captains sat and watched, and the other was entirely absent. They took shortcuts on the short, one-fourth mile long run before practice and often missed practice to go to their chorus practice. Needless to say, I was not happy about this development and I decided to confront the coach about the sudden change in policy. This is when she told me that she didn't think of me as a leader and that she didn't realize that I would be upset by her decision. She also said that putting the decision up to a vote was a bad idea because none of the younger JV kids would know anyone on the team to vote for despite knowing that I had been friends with many of them the year before. This was about a week into practice. That same week, my sister had a softball tournament going on, so my mom wasn't able to take me to practice on time. She had to drop me off early at the same time that JV practice began. My mom told me that I was going to help coach the JV kids, and indeed I did. I ended up coaching them the entire season, never missing a day, even though I injured my knee and couldn't practice myself. I got to watch the coach as she only worked with the first lane kids. First lane is the fastest, and as the other coach took the second, third, and fourth. I took the 5th and 6th lanes where there were mostly first-year swimmers, younger kids, and ones who regularly caused trouble, all of whom needed much more attention than the other more experienced swimmers. Some days, when one of the coaches was out, I had to take the 4th lane as well. My kids always finished their workouts on time, and most of them improved greatly in their times. At the end of the season, the last 4 lanes all demanded that I be their coach, insisting that I gave better advice and that I was nicer than the coaches. Seeing the look on the head coach's face when that happened days in a row was the greatest revenge I've ever gotten. Her realization that I was much more capable as a leader than the captains and that all of the kids I work with like me is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Story 7. One of my friends works in this big company and tends to bring in new people with him whenever we go out clubbing. One night, he brings in this one guy who I'll call K. While we were eating and pre-gaming at this restaurant, K seemed alright at first despite hearing from my friend that he gets absolutely nuts when he's drunk. Absolutely nuts was definitely an understatement. After numerous sake bombs, K is smashed, and when we were walking towards our next destination, he starts pretending he can parkour, cartwheeling, trying to run on walls. He almost tried to jump from the fourth floor of a parking garage. Of course, it doesn't end there. We rented out a hotel room and suite for that night, and for the rest of it, K acted like a drama queen. By this point, it was clear to everyone else that he was an annoying little punk. And all through the night, Kay kept shuffling on his place on the bigger couch, whining, moving about, and turning off the lights to the bathroom. I wanted to keep it on so my other friend, who was sick, 
could see her way to the bathroom just in case she needed to throw up because he couldn't sleep with it on. I was stuck sleeping on one of the single couch seats, so I had a real hard time trying to sleep. I was getting crankier dealing with this guy. Fast forward to a few months later, it's my friend's birthday, and we go clubbing again. He was sort of picky on who to invite because he didn't want certain characters in there, but he still invited a crap ton of people. Of course, Kay gets a whiff of the party from someone else at their work and comes into the club already hammered. He bumps into people, spilling their drinks, and gets nasty up on girls that don't want anything to do with him. I'm just standing there with my other friends, telling them about Kay until I come up with an idea of telling the bouncer about dealing with this guy. I go up to one of the bouncers, tell them that this dude is in the middle of the dance floor, is bumping into people, spilling drinks everywhere, and causing a ruckus. I may have embellished some stuff, but it worked. The bouncer makes his way towards Kay, taps him on the shoulder, and Kay almost starts a fight with the bouncer. Bad move. The bouncer grabs Kay and starts pulling him out. Kay goes limp on the floor, forcing the bouncer to pretty much pull him by the legs down the stairs. We were on the second floor and out the club. It was the best, and it was amazing to see that moment. One of my friends tipped the bouncer heavily for helping us out because otherwise, Kay would have ruined someone else's night. Story 8. So when I was at primary school, we had a huge Pokemon card fad. This little piece of carp kid, let's call him Adolf, stole my freaking Pokemon cards. I was crying at home for ages and eventually my dad got out of me what had happened. First off, my dad phoned Adolf's house phone wishing to speak to his mother. Adolf pretended to be his mom and assured my dad that it would all be sorted out. Not to be outwitted by a nine-year-old, my dad realized this and complained to the school. Adolf denied all accusations and got away with it. In reaction to the drama, the school banned Pokemon cards. So now everyone hated me because they blame my snitching on getting Pokemon banned. I'm down all my Pokemon cards and I vow to myself that I'd take revenge on Adolf. I saved up my pocket money for months and eventually got a decent collection of Pokemon cards again, including a Blastoise. I then started an underground Pokemon card club in the boys' toilets of the school during morning and lunch break. The teachers never found out about it, but every now and then a kid would be caught and have his cards confiscated. I was the leader of this group and everyone looked up to me. I would always make everyone chip in a few cards to anyone who had theirs confiscated. Adolf was forever banned from partaking in the underground poke club. He spent like a year playing by himself. So, the first rule of the poke club is to not talk about the poke club. Good stuff. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you made it this far, I'm sure you're also going to enjoy what's the most messed up way to get revenge. Revenge done in story 5 practically destroyed the dude's life. I'll see you in that video, and thank you for watching this one.